Moving schmoving. What I learned about housing. I don't particularly like to move. I mean, change residences. There's not only a lot of physical labor involved, but there's all the decisions to be made and a huge amount of extra tasks. So if you're a busy entrepreneur like myself, how do you fit it all in? In more ways than one. That said, here's my moving story. I hope you'll find it um, moving. The landlord, we'll call him Brad, was a typical one, very cheap, would only fix things that would save him money. If it didn't save him money, he didn't fix it. Other than that, we were on good terms. In fact, he and his wife visited to see how I was taking care of their property, and he said, we hope you'll stay here as long as you like. That was back in the beginning of April. Two weeks later, I got a notice in my mailbox to vacate with the minor admonishment. We have changed our minds as the intro to the letter. I now had 30 days to get out. It seemed like a reasonable time, although legally in California, <clears throat> tenants are entitled to 60 days, especially if they have a home office. But I didn't say anything. A few days later, I ran into Brad and asked him what was up with the mind changing. And he said he was turning the place into an Airbnb. Gotta make money for retirement, he chortled. I was deadpan. Well, good luck with that. A couple of days later, I carved out some time to start looking at house rentals. And what began to dawn on me was that San Diego has a seller's market going on big time with housing. And a housing shortage on top of that. I was looking for a small cottage, they call them casitas here, that allowed a small dog. Turns out everybody was looking for the same thing, it seemed. I signed up for all the real-time email alerts with Craigslist, Home.com, Zillow, and others. I'd call as soon as I'd get the alert, and the typical response, if I got a response at all, was, Oh, we've had 20 calls already. Isn't that great? Well, for you, maybe. I realized I had to up my game, so I put everything else in the back burner to concentrate on the search for a residence that seemed to become more and more elusive. I looked at probably 20 places and all were either too expensive or had no pets policies, mold, or other types of deal breakers. And I really wasn't being all that picky. June 1st was in two days, and I hadn't nailed down a place yet. I did have one picked out, but it was being remodeled and wouldn't be ready until the 5th. I figured the Brad would let me have a few days grace, but no. No, 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 I have a construction guys coming in on the 1st to tear down that wall in your place, so you've got to be out. Ugh. It dawned on me now that I had two things to do. One, find somewhere to store my stuff, and two, find somewhere for Wookie, my doggie, and I had to live temporarily while I finalized a rental. I then remembered a friend of mine back in April had said, well, if you need a place temporarily, I've got plenty of room. I called her. Hey, great timing. I'm going to be out of town for two weeks so you could take care of the dog while you're here. Perfect. It was only about 10 minutes away, and so now I just needed to put my stuff somewhere. For the previous two years, I had rented garage space with the house next door, to set up my infrared sauna and store some stuff I had trouble fitting into the 500 square feet I had to work with. It all went great until the ownership changed and the fiery redhead from San Francisco, Megan, told me to pack it all out of the garage. She was turning the place into a, you guessed it, Airbnb. <laughs> I sold the sauna and squeezed everything else back into my place. Since then, I noticed the garage remained empty, so I called Megan to ask if I could store my stuff in there for a month while I found a new place. Sure, give me 50 bucks. Okay, second problem solved. The place with the remodel ended up to be untenable, not because of the building, but the landlady ended up just being nuts. She doubled the deposit after we had an agreement, and then I found out from a friend that she was dog-phobic. So I spent the next month nearly every day scouting places. I covered all of San Diego County, which is a big piece of land. Looked at more places with hope waning. My house host returned from her trip and I told her my predicament. Well, 
maybe you should be looking for a situation rather than just a building. Huh. Then I realized what I really wanted was to live somewhere where the people were conscious and community driven. I posted my pitch on the San Diego Conscious Housing Group on Facebook, and somehow the energy seemed much lighter. In two days I got a hot lead. It was for a casita right across the street from where I had been, and I knew several of the people there already because they had been neighbors. The name of the place? Zen Casitas. Two yoga teachers, a couple of writers, and nice aware people. The irony made me laugh. I immediately called the management company, and after a few days, the lease was signed, and I was rapidly deposited in my new place with Wookie. The moral of the story is that if you're attempting to actualize something, make sure it's not something else you're not acknowledging that you're making a deal breaker. As I was running around San Diego County looking at places, I was unconsciously running everything through a filter of requirements that I wasn't acknowledging to myself. So, the universe and all its wisdom kept sending me on a wild goose chase until I finally coughed up the real reason I needed to move into a new place. After all, a home isn't just a building. It's partly reflecting what you believe you are. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx, www.pureenergyrx.com.